So I've been recording a lot of vocals lately, and I've been having a lot of trouble with uh, taking and copying with Ableton. It's been a really arduous process, and um, I'd love the ability to be able to take and comp, but it's not available in Live 10, and I work with people who can't upgrade to Live 11. So I've been playing around with a lot of other DAWs, Studio One, um, GarageBand, Reaper, and I've been really frustrated with my workflow being split, and all I really want to do is to be able to take and comp within Live 10. Um, so I started trying to learn Max for Live so I could write a plugin that would do this. Um, so I wanted to show you a new way of taking and comping in Ableton Live 10 um, that in some ways is actually better than what you get with Studio One. Um, with Studio One, it's pretty complicated. Um, if you just look at the way it does takes. Every time I do a new recording, it ends up in a new take folder. Um, it's really hard to, for example, move this take separately from the track that contains it. I'd have to export this out to tracks. Um, it's kind of clunky and, and difficult to use. I just want to be able to treat takes like any other track, but also be able to choose them from within the take group. Um, so. I'd really love to do things a little bit differently. Um, so I created this Max for Live plugin to make this a lot easier in Ableton. Um, so in order to use this, we're going to have to have Max for Live, of course. Um, this plugin uses the audio routing system, um, which is free. Um, there will be a link to the example project in the comments. Um, you can download it from there. Um, so in order to use this, we're going to open up Live 11. We have an empty track here. Um, when you download this plugin, um, you'll see a folder which has a template project in it. Um, so something I realized recently is that when you have an Ableton Live project accessible in the browser, it'll actually show you all of the tracks from within there, and you can just drag them to your live set. Um, so to use this, we're going to go into the template project included with it, and we're going to look at the Comp Master group. Um, this comp master group is pre-configured. It gives you a group which has nothing on it. Um, it has a take master with uh, a controller to control which take we're playing and a recording track. So just to show how this works, I'm going to arm the recording track real quick. Um, I would love to play to some sort of loop, so I'm going to pull something off slice real quick just to have something to play along with. And I'm going to go to my recording track, make sure that I'm within, um, make sure loop mode is set. Um, and I'm going to arm my track. And I'm going to press record. So sorry, that was a bit long. I just wanted to have plenty of material to work with here. Um, so first thing to notice, um, what Ableton gives you, it looks like there's actually just one clip here, but there's a sliver of another clip here. Um, for this plugin to work, we need to actually make sure there's only one clip within the range. Um, once you've done that, make sure that this is named something decent. Uh, we're gonna call it verse. Um, the Tasty Comp plugin is already loaded here. We're going to click Slice Clip to Takes. Uh, 
Um, the very first thing that did is it took the name of the clip and it added take one to the end of it and it also reset the loop length. So you can see here that we're, we've got a loop length set to the equivalent amount of time as the project uh, loop length. Um, if I select this clip and hit that button again, I'll get the second take. If I select that and hit it again, I'll get the third take. So we have three takes here. If I did it again, I would get an empty take because there's no more audio data there. Once we've done that, I'm going to go to Take Master, um, which also has TAC Comp on it, and we're going to tap Update Take Master. What this is going to do is it's going to look at how many takes you have in this group, and it's going to give you a trigger for each one. Um, this doesn't actually trigger the take. It, it sort of unmutes the take. So if I took this note right here, which is set to C2, um, I can see which takes are assigned to which notes. So to just look at the first take, you can just play this. If I want to listen to the second take, I can just move the note up. If I wanted to compose two different takes, I would just set notes for the areas that I want to compose. So I'm going to compose a little bit of track two, track three, track one. So you can actually hear that um, some of these takes are a little bit less loud than others. So I've actually mapped velocity so that it goes to the take volume, the degree to which that take gets louder. So if I play this from here. Cool, so we have that last take right here. And something that you can do with this that um, is much more difficult to do in a couple of other DAWs is I can actually like interleave these and play bits of previous takes on top of the other takes. So I'm gonna play all three takes here and I'm gonna stretch these so they actually overlap just a little bit. So we'll see how that sounds. So you can see how this is actually working. Um, right here we have a drum rack and inside it there are chains that the plugin has set up for each of these tracks. They're color coded and named the same as the tracks. Um, when I trigger this pad, it does a trigger envelope which is mapped to the gain on an audio source plugin. These are automatically mapped to each of these individual tracks. Uh, additionally, velocity is mapped to the maximum um, value of this mapping. So when this thing triggers, it'll go up to the maximum value. You can kind of see it working here. So since these are all mapped uh, post effects but pre-mixer, um, I can actually still add in whatever I want in these tracks. I could, for example, add a cabinet to one of these right there. And additionally, um, what's something that was much harder to do in Studio One is I can actually like realign these. So for example, this one right here, if it's not perfectly aligned, I can actually just fix that. Cool, the other thing that's kind of neat with this approach um, is I can take my take configuration and I can save variations of this. 
and you can try completely different variations just by using MIDI itself. So I'm going to take this and reverse it. So a couple of uh, random caveats when, when using this. Just make sure that you preserve the naming that the plugin has created. It actually uses this uh, colon take thing um, in the way it works and operates to figure out its place. Um, the other thing is in the take master, uh, make sure you don't put any plugins before this expression control or audio source in each of them. And also make sure comp controller is the very first one in each of these. Um, you can't interleave. If you wanted to do a different section of the song over here, you'd have to drag in a new comp master for that section of the song. Um, if you want to render a take, um, you could just freeze the track or you can create a new audio track and set its input to um, the comp master. Comp master post make sure to record and that will record your take directly into um, this new audio track. There's a way to do this. Post effects, yeah. Yeah, you'll figure out how to do it. Um, cool. Um, that's about it. Um, hope this was helpful for you. If you feel like um, showing your appreciation, feel free to send me a message on. Uh, SoundCloud, follow me there, Twitter, Instagram, or feel free to make a donation uh, to me on Venmo if you find this useful. I'm definitely open to feedback and ways to improve this, especially for people with more experience um, in Max for Live. Um, thanks very much for your time. Have a good night.